listen to the adventure on Pumlet on W four C Y Radio. Wake up, America! It's time for the adventures of Pipe Man on W4CY.com, West Palm Beach's number one internet radio station. Here's your host, the Pipe Man. This is Pipe Man here on the Avengers Pipe Man W4CY Radio, and I'm here with Tommy from Undeath, Jared from Undeath, Matt from Undeath. Nice. Here at the 20th anniversary of Download Festival. Is that insane or what? Yeah, I kind of remember when this started. I was paying attention loosely back home, just like reading all like the, I guess it was like the new, new metal magazines and stuff like that. I, it, I can't believe it's 20 years. It makes me feel old. You are old. I know. (laughs) If you can remember 20 years. But I am too, so that's okay. And so is Blothar, who was just here. So (laughs) we're all fucking old. So is, look, Metallica last night. They're older than all of us. (laughs) Actually, actually I was at their first show ever. Really? Yeah. I mean, like, would that be L.A. or the Bay Area? L.A. L.A. Yeah. See, I hate when people say that. Or, like, I'm also originally from Jersey. So all my Old Bridge friends are like, oh, Metallica's from Old Bridge. Yeah, after they were from L.A. and then the Bay Area. Are you Metal Militia then? I wasn't because I left Jersey in 1980. Gotcha. Yeah. And moved to L.A. So I was there for the whole L.A. scene. Yep. yep. That whole sunset strip wild shit (laughs) and then i went back to old bridge after the metal militia thing was the old bridge militia thing was kind of no more gotcha that's still crazy that you got to experience all that stuff oh yeah first slayer show ever i was at that's awesome (laughs) yeah so it's like it was kind of surreal it's kind of surreal when i see like metallica last night playing it's like i was with 24 people at, at a little club watching them and i'm looking at the sea of people at Download, I'm like, we never imagined that, ever. Yeah, I, I can't believe it either. I mean, like, just speaking from a personal angle, I mean, we all came up in, like, DIY bands and stuff, playing to two, three, four people, tops. Right. Some nights. And then we looked out in front of the crowd today, and I was like, there were so many people you couldn't imagine that they were di- separate people. It just became one amorphous blob. Yeah, right? And, you know, I think it's way cool that here we are in 2023 and you could have be at a festival like this and there's a metal band playing and not a commercial one and there's a sea of people like that. That wouldn't have happened back in the day. It's, yeah, it's unreal. It's like age of the internet, I guess, is like bringing people out to stuff and I'm glad that we resonate with them. We, I can tell, I know we have some like poppier structure and stuff, but like the, there's something to it, I guess, of being something that's like catchy yeah. that you can write. I think catchy's cool too. You know, listen, even the bands back then, Metallica was catchy, okay? Slayer was catchy. I mean, you know, Tom Mariah wasn't even a metalhead. Did you know I that? I wasn't really either. Oh, tell us. Well, you know, I honestly, I didn't really get into death metal until I started hanging out with the guys in the band, and I didn't really realize until then how it, like, scratched the itch of that I had for the guitar playing I wanted to play. Nice. You know, very aggressive and, like, a little bit of technicality. So I love it. I'm glad you said about the technicality because people that aren't into metal don't realize, especially with death metal, how technical the musicianship is. People think it's just noise. And it's so far from that. You know, and two, like, I think, like, the low tunings and, like, the double kick drum and all that, it kind of... It takes a while to get used to listening to it and to be able to actually hear the technicality, but it's it's an acquired taste and it's definitely worth acquiring. That for sure. Yeah. I acquired my taste for death metal with Possessed. When I hitchhiked to the Bay Possessed. Area. Yeah. I went hitchhiked to the Bay Area and watched them. Actually one of the big shows I was at that's like considered an iconic show 
was the first show ever to add metal and punk in the same room. You know, because if you're a long hair, you got your ass kicked at a punk show and vice versa. So it was at this place called the Sun Valley Sportsman's Lodge. Okay, it was an Elks Lodge. On the punk side was suicidal before they crossed over. Like, I couldn't go to suicidal shows in the beginning. COC, oh, before nice. Pepper, pre-Pepper. Wow. When they were hardcore. And I, I think it was like 1983 or some shit like that. And then you, I don't remember what the third punk band was, but there were three metal bands, Possessed, Dark Angel, and this band Savage Grace, which was one of my favorite bands. They never really came out of L.A., but they did tour with Motorhead for a while. And they just came out with a new album recently, actually, after 30 years. Can you imagine putting out an album after 30 years? <laughs> I hope to. Yeah, right? Yeah. So what did you listen to before metal? I listened to a lot of pop music, you know, some like indie rock from like the 90s and stuff. I listened to, you know, a little bit of metal. I like love playing Guitar Hero and the Guitar Hero soundtrack. Right. Yeah. Cool. And how about you? I, I got into like the 80s kind of metal when I was younger because my dad's CD tape collection like Iron Maiden, early Metallica stuff, just all the like Pantera, all the like kind of classic 80s, 90s stuff. And I don't know, I followed a pretty normal path sunshine of once I like got on the internet and, and started to be able to go to stores by myself and find, you know, more underground or just heavier, not even necessarily always underground, but just heavier stuff that was coming out in the 2000s and whatnot. It just kind of has gone ever since then but I mean we all love to listen to different kinds of music I mean see I think that's cool most of the time when I'm driving like when we're touring in the US and I'm driving I 90% of the time I'm not listening to metal because there's so much road noise going on something that is just a little like put you in quieter. the zone put yeah, you in the zone it just has a little more you can hear it puts you in the zone you can just kind of chill out listen to it we listen to you know literally all kinds of music nice so, and, and i think that's like cool and that's what probably your generation did better than my generation because we had all the fucking gatekeepers and mm -hmm. you couldn't even listen to a certain band you know it's like if you listen to this band you can't listen to that band and it was just stupid you yeah. know like you should be able to listen when you know what and then the bands they couldn't do shit either. Like when Metallica's Black Album came out, me and my friends were all fucking posers, you know, and, right, and right. it's just stupid, you know, like we all should have different influences, different. And I think that's what makes a band like you better than the average band, because you're not sounding like everybody else cause you're blending all these things that are your different tastes. You know, yeah, there's, for sure. there's a lot of metal bands nowadays that I'm like. They're just plugging in an algebraic equation. It, right. it, it's not met. That's not metal, as far as I'm concerned. To just uh -huh. play here, do this, and you have a metal song. You know. Well, I mean, the early bands, if you think about it, were making a sound yes. that didn't metal didn't fully exist yet. Yep. And the way that we think about it now, so they were listening to music that wasn't the that's exact right. kind of music that they were playing to make the kind of music that they ended up making. So. Somewhere, though, we did get stuck in this idea that you have to listen to that kind of music always to play it, which we all love that kind of music, obviously, but that doesn't really make sense in the way of, like, to, to make your own sound or try to yeah. keep moving forward. Obviously, there has to be some kind of other influence to not just make the same exact Stuff. Exactly, and that's why a lot of the metal bands back then all sounded different. You could tell them all apart, mm -hmm. you know. Listen, there wasn't even a such thing as thrash metal. Metallica was power metal for a minute. Imagine that, them being called power metal. Like, it, because what else are you going to call them type of thing? It, it, it was. And then talking on Araya, he never even listened to Iron Maiden. And Slayer, when they started, they were playing cover songs like Maiden and Priest. Yeah. I mean, like the, I think the taking those classic examples and then upping the intensity gives us our Slayers and our Metallicas. 
I kind of think that's how we look at any other style of music we enjoy now. Like what we enjoy about it will take the elements we like and you just add the aggression, the intensity of metal that's passed down through the generations. You know? No doubt. So now, for those listeners that have never heard you guys before, how would you guys as artists describe your music? Not genre-wise, but just how you would describe it. I guess we'll have to go person by person because I'm sure I it think changes so. each, each person. I was actually a, a late re- addition to the band. It was first Matt, Kyle, and Alex, and then me and Jared joined up around the same time. So I have the, uh, the, I guess, the blessing of looking at it from an outsider's perspective at That's first. That's cool. To kind of like hear it, experience it as an audience member, and then go back to it. So I heard, obviously, death metal, but there was twists and turns that made it sound natural. It reminded me a lot of, and this, now that I'm in the band, it might make it sound like I'm being a little egotistical. It reminded me of Rush, and that a lot of stuff was complicated, but it felt natural. Nice. And to do that, I think, is impressive. So I give props to, props to Kyle every time I hear a song he writes that I know is complicated to play, but it just sounds like it feels like a natural song. You know, so... I love it. It's poppy, intense, sometimes fast, usually not slow. <laughs> but well, that's how I look at it, at least. How about you, Jared? Yeah, I mean, I would say it's definitely metal music. The thing that I really think is important to the sound is sort of the development of ideas you know it's not like you just have one riff pasted after the next riff after the next one it's like the riffs are building building towards something and you know there's payoffs at different points during each song and it's it's detailed too i like it rewards it rewards close listening the detailed i think goes along with the technicality in my opinion i think these guys said it pretty good it's kind of hard for me to to really say much more than that I guess it feels like from the beginning Kyle the first time that we played together it was pretty natural like Kyle just had some riffs and he had me over we wanted to play death metal music we would both been wanting to play for a while and we just never met anyone where we like meshed like that and so we got together, he showed me some stuff, I started playing some beats, we talked about some ideas of like, these guys just talked about trying to keep it technical but natural feel to it, not anything that like we couldn't actually play live or like, you know, have too many, too much like gear, or, like fancy stuff like that, keep it real simple in that regards. Yeah, and it was just kind of gone from there. Nice, and you know, it, it is the, the feeling comfortable thing. I like that because to me, that's the opposite of what I was talking about before when you're plugging in these formulas. How can it feel natural if you're just going through the motions? Uh-huh. You know, to me, just be you. Just be yeah. a musician and whatever comes out, comes out. I remember when I was first playing guitar, my dad would be yelling at me, you should do something else because you suck. And all I was doing is that, I probably did suck, but what I was doing is experimenting with the sounds, yeah. you know? And I was like, oh, that sounds cool. Type, and that's how new music comes about. Uh huh. And it's maybe how you sound. And sometimes it's easy to listen to other things or things that people are used to and be like, how come I don't sound like that? Right. But, you know, you try to just play how you play and not always have to compare to what other people are doing and that's the way it should be because like even when bands do covers make Mm -hmm. it your own because you're never going to do it as good as the original if you do it their way right because it's their way so what you got going on after download after download yeah yep we're going to amsterdam one of my favorite places on earth (laughs) I believe that's into the grave fest yeah and then from there we're going into germany for a few dates have another have a couple other fests that i kind of don't remember the names of right now i'm sorry return the strength is one i guess and copenhagen in copenhagen oh that's a good one yeah that's gonna be fun and then a few more days in germany that we get to go home nice and so how do people connect to you on social media on the web how do they buy your merch because that's important we have undeath metal or undeathmetal.com right all right and then our social media is mainly UndeathNY at Instagram and Twitter. 
yeah, we're pretty active on all those. We'll, one of us will communicate to you in some capacity if you're respectful, I guess. But if, even nice. if you're not, we might also be <laughs> a little communicative. Nice. I love it. So is there anything going on that we want to tell the listeners about that we haven't covered already that you want them to know about you guys? I can't go into too much detail about it, but we definitely have some new material in the works. We're probably going to be taking it a little bit easier until, well, we just announced the Municipal Waste Tour oh, yeah. coming to the U.K., in October, I believe the 1st through the 16th, along with Gel. Awesome, fast, hardcore. And then I think that's about all we've got going on besides working on the album, which is going to be coming out sometime, or, work, or we should be recording it sometime next year. Love it, love it. Well, you guys are badass. Thank you. And thanks for being here at Download Festival, 20th anniversary. Like, how, how much of an honor is that, that they had to handpick this lineup for this 20th anniversary and you were handpicked? It's insane. I remember the day we got picked. We played Manchester, I believe, in February at some point, and the pressure just mounted immensely <laughs> once we heard that Cam was coming through. It was like, all right, if you guys play well, you go play download. It was like, okay, wow. I guess we'll just get up there and rock it. And I guess you did all right, because here you are. Two decades. Absolutely incredible. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, it's a pleasure to have you here, and thanks for being on the Adventures of Pipe Man. Thank you for listening to the Adventures of Pipe Man on W4CY Radio.